Hey everybody, Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So I have a really cool build that I want to share with you this week. It is a new game coming out called Lost in Play, and it launches this coming Wednesday, August 10th, and it is just beautiful. Um, if you're familiar with the TV show Gravity Falls, it kind of has a really cool, weird creature, mysterious vibe there. Uh, another great show would be Over the Garden Wall. If you haven't seen either one of those, go check them out because they're awesome. But yeah, this game, the animation is gorgeous. Uh, it's a really fun uh, kind of walkthrough game, solving puzzles and mysteries with Toto and his sister, uh, these two little characters here. And I am really excited to show you about this uh, game and then show you my build. So first, let's check out a little trailer. It's one minute long. It is gorgeous. Let's check it out. Okay, like I said, that is just, it's so beautiful, um, and I think this will make a really fun build. So what I've done here is I've actually sketched out the two characters, and I'm going to use this kind of for the scale and as a pattern to build. Um, I couldn't find any references of like an, an actual true 3D round of it, so I'm going to have to come up with some solutions for this. I think a lot of this build won't be so much of, hey, here's how to sculpt, but it'll be more of... Here's some of the problem solving that I did in order to make the sculpture. So come on, let's do it. So first thing I need to build some little armatures. So I'm going to use aluminum foil and I'm going to start from the head, then the waist, then the legs. So with the head, I just got the aluminum ball here and start putting on some clay. I'm using my drawing as kind of a one-to-one -one scale, so this helps me. Uh, using the end of a paintbrush here to just put some divots and then putting the eyes on. I don't want the eyebrows to look angry, so I'm kind of just making sure they're adjusted properly. I put the nose on, and after I put the nose on, I realized mm, the eyes were too close, so I pull the nose off, kind of readjust that, and I'll just kind of push in a new hole. So that happens when you're sculpting. Sometimes you just have to kind of smash it out and redo it so for the mouth nothing really special here just kind of took out the negative space okay there's the head baked now we got to get some ears on i am using this circle template because i was trying to just kind of hand sculpt the ears and they looked horrible so this actually gave me a really nice clean look and i'll just trim off a little slice there and stick those on and that actually worked great Okay, this guy's ready to throw in the oven and, and bake him. So after baking him, I realized, ah, I need to build out his cheeks just a little bit more. Maybe his chin and his forehead. I also moved his ears down. I think that looks way better. So, all right, now he looks totally weird bald. So let's put some hair on, just blending that out. And for not having a full 3D round of what his hair looks like, I think that turned out pretty great. Here I'm just throwing some craft paint on, nothing fancy. Um, just the hair color, the flesh, painting in the mouth, then throw on some pupils. And now it's time to move on to his body. So I built this little armature out of flower wire just because I want the arms to have some support with the clay and stuff. But after I built this, I, I was thinking through and like, I need to get this wooden dowel from his neck through the body. But that wasn't fitting, so I went ahead and built another one that has a little notch out of it. And I think what this will do is this will allow me to slide that piece all the way into the body and Toto likes it. So, all right, time to throw some clay on the body here. And for the arms, I just rolled a little snake, sliced it, and then kind of pressed around the, the flower wire there. And this is really going to give some nice support for the arms. For the hand, I just rolled a little ball, kind of smashed it, and then sliced out the fingers. 
and then I was able to reshape and form those. And now we'll just throw on some of the little details for his sweatshirt. And that's looking pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think that's great. The head can swivel back and forth. So now it's time to move on to the legs. Now I'm using a pen cap here just to kind of push in a little space where his shorts are going to go. Now his legs are really, really thin. So I don't want to use clay for that because I'm afraid that the legs will just snap off, especially since he's in a running pose and it will only be balanced on one leg and the head is a little bit heavier. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run some wire all the way up into his body, through his shorts, down to his leg. In order to be able to pull this off, what I did was I found some coat hanger and some polystyrene tubing. And fortunately for me, the polystyrene fit perfect in there. So that's going to give a lot of structure. So what I'm doing here is I just, again, just like the arm, I a little slice in the leg. I'll get that wire in there, smash it in. I'll blend that all out. And then hopefully this will slide right up into his body. And with a little blending, I think that's going to turn out pretty nice and give me the structure that I need. So here's kind of the finished look. You can see his leg is just going to be the polystyrene with the coat hanger through it. The shoes, pretty straightforward, just a little ball of clay. I did indent the polystyrene into it so I can glue that on later. Painting up the pants here, definitely needs a couple of coats. Again, I'm just using some cheapy craft paints, so nothing fancy. Painting up the leg there. And now it's time to move on to Gal. Okay, so this one is going to take quite a bit of problem solving. I, I really struggled with this, but what I thought was I'll build this little foam core box as a template just so I kind of know the scale and size. And then I'll take some polystyrene and I'll build my box out of that. Now, polystyrene is a really great material to work with. It cuts super easy. Um, you can see here if you have a center cut, if you score it multiple times and then do a little X in the center, with a little bit of prying back and forth, you can pop that out and have a really nice clean window. So I've got that clean window cut. Now what I'm doing is I'm sculpting just the face. I don't want the box to get too heavy, so I thought if I do just the face, I can kind of just set that in to my polystyrene box. So I got my box finished, and that's looking pretty good. I did a little bit of sanding on that to clean it up. Then I, this is the face that's baked. And then what I'll do is I'll slide that face in. And now I have to figure out how to secure the face in there without filling it with a giant ball of clay. So what I did was I made this little square piece of clay that fits right in the bottom. And my thought was if I can get this to kind of marry up with the face, you'll see here I kind of just push it together and gives me kind of this little L shape. And if I can get that in and out easy enough and glue it in there, that should work without having to fill the whole thing. All right, well, that's baking in the oven. You can see I have a little polystyrene peg that I put in. And I put this little mohawk that it fits right on there so I can glue that on. Okay, the face is done baking. So we're going to just kind of muscle that in. It is a little bit harder to get in because it's um, rigid, but it fit and it's going to work. So I'm going to super glue that in a little bit later after I paint it. Speaking of painting, let's paint up this box. Now, this box was so much fun to paint because in the game, Gal actually cr creates this box like a, like a craft. So it's scissors and paint markers. So scribbly and a little messy is perfect. And this was really fun to do. Now onto the body, I took this dowel and I drilled a little hole through it and I'm using some more of that coat hanger. I just bent it into shape. And then I'll take a little bit of aluminum foil and I'll build a nice little armature. So now what I'm doing is I just wanna look at the angle of this. I wanna have nice action lines, so I'm gonna make sure that that's looking great. The shoulders ended up being way too narrow, so I have to actually take this all apart. And I'm gonna take some additional coat hanger, widen that out a little bit. And now that I have the shoulders widened out, I think this is a lot nicer and going to work a lot better. So let me just blend these in. And then I sculpt out the dress a little bit more, little straps on the jumper. And then I'll do some additional little details like the pockets. And there's a little line around the hem of the dress. So looking pretty cool. 
Now onto the legs. Now this ends up also being a little bit of a design challenge, just thinking through it, because I want some curvature on the legs. But in order to do that, I need to use a polystyrene. It won't bend, so I just used my heat gun and heated that up a little bit. And after a few seconds and just a little bit of pressure, it slid right on the curvature of that coat hanger. So now I've got the support that I need and I've got a really cool bend in the leg. Now, because this leg is just floating in the air, I'm not really worried about the wire running all the way up into the body. But on the other leg, I am gonna run the wire all the way up the body and then all the way down through into the base. So yeah, you can see here, I'm gonna have plenty of support. That looks pretty great. All right, onto the base. I figured out kind of the spacing that I wanted the two characters, drilled some holes, little bonus there in the bottom. And then I took some Dollar Tree foam core and just peeled off the paper. And I'm using a little pencil here just to score the, the styrofoam because I want it to look kind of like a sidewalk. And then I will take some Mod Podge and I'll just cover that up, let it dry. Then I put a base coat of brown and then I'm just dry brushing the top here. The sidewalk in the game is kind of more of a tannish color and I end up adjusting that a little bit. All right, let's glue down the sidewalk. We'll just put some tacky glue and then peg that in place, take a little bit more tacky glue and spread that all around. And then once that's all spread around evenly, I'm going to take some modeling grass and just kind of spread that around. In the game, Gal is chasing Toto down a sidewalk and there's grass in their yard. I wanted to make a little loss and play plaque, so I glued on that little polystyrene peg and I drilled a hole in the base and you can see that just slides right in. So that's gonna work really nice for my base. And then I cut this little stencil here on my vinyl cutter and I'm putting this on and I should be able to take it outside, spray paint it, and that's gonna work perfect as my little stencil. Now for the paint job, what I did was I laid down a red first, then a little bit of orange and then a yellow splatter. So I think that gives a cool effect. And then just for all my makers out there who love peeling off masking, this is a little treat for you. And there we go. That is it, and I am about ready to finish this one up, so let's go play. Okay, that was so much fun. There was a lot of things that I learned and, you know, just growing, and I know there's probably sculptors out there that are like, ah! I would never build it that way, but I, this is just <laughs> how I problem solved it, and I think it turned out really great, so uh, let's take some turnaround shots of this. Uh, don't forget, August 10th, this coming Wednesday, 2022, uh, it launches on um, Nintendo's platform and other platforms. I'll put some links below, but uh, yeah, as always, it's a great day to be a toy nerd. Have a great one.